In our last video, we started the proof for Karachatori theorem. We proved that the collection M of mu star measurable sets for mu star and also measure was a sigma algebra. And now in this video, we will prove that the restriction is actually a complete measure. So for this, we have to prove two things. First of all, that that restriction is a measure. And once we have a measure, we have to prove that it is complete. If you don't remember what complete means, then go check out a previous video in this reproduction list when we explain everything you have to know about complete measures. This is the proof we did last video about M being a sigma algebra. And one of the things we proved is that mu star of E for some set E in parts of X is equal to the sum of mu star of E intersection A sub J for A sub J a sequence of different sets plus mu star of E intersection B complement, where B was the union up to infinity of those sets A sub J. And now I'm going to prove that mu star restricted to M is a measure. And I'm going to start with this same calculation. So for this, remember we had a sequence A sub J of sets in the sigma algebra disjoint and we were calling B the union up to infinity and we know because of all the things we proved in the last video we know that B is an element in the sigma algebra and again the calculation we made was for some set E in parts of X we said that the measure mu star of e was equal to the sum from j equals 1 up to infinity of the measure of e intersection a sub j plus the measure of e intersection b complement. So now this is valid for any set e in parts of x. In particular, it is valid for b. And when we say e equals to b, what we have is mu star of b here is equal to the sum from j equals 1 up to infinity of mu star of b intersection a sub j plus mu star of B intersection B complement. But now B intersection B complement is the empty set. And so this last measure is zero. And B intersection A sub J is equal because B is the union up to infinity and the A sub J's are disjoint. This intersection is equal to A sub J. And so what we have is that this is equal to the sum from j equals 1 up to infinity of mu star of a sub j plus 0. And so we have that mu star restricted to m is countably additive and therefore it is a measure. Now let's prove that mu star is complete. And to prove that a measure is complete, we have to take an element in the sigma algebra that measures zero and prove that their subsets are also elements in the sigma algebra. So we're going to take A, an element in the sigma algebra, such that mu star of A is equal to zero. And we will take some set F, a subset of A. To prove that f is in the sigma algebra, we would have to prove that f is measurable because the sigma algebra is formed by all the measurable sets. So how do we prove that a set is measurable? Well, we start by taking some set E in parts of x. But notice that we can write E as E intersection f union E intersection F complement. And this union is disjoint. And because mu star is an outer measure, the restriction to the sigma algebra is a measure. 
but we don't know if E is an element in the sigma algebra. So mu star is an outer measure. So mu star of E is less than or equal to because outer measures have subadditivity. The measure of E intersection F plus the measure of E intersection F complement. But now this measure has to be zero. And this other measure, E intersection F complement, is a subset of E. So then we have that this is less than or equal to the measure of E. And so we have an equality, and this tells us that F is an element in the sigma algebra. So let's see what we did. We grabbed an element in the sigma algebra that measured zero. We took a subset of the set A and proved that the subset was also an element in the sigma algebra. So with this, we have that mu star restricted to M, so the measure, is complete. And that's it. That's actually all we had to prove for the second part. So this theorem is amazing because it's telling us that from an outer measure, we are able to get a sigma algebra M and the restriction of the outer measure to the sigma algebra M is a complete measure. So not only were we able to find a measure, we were able to find a complete measure. And now all this is great as long as we have an outer measure. So the next question we will ask ourselves is, how do we get outer measures?